Welcome to Junkie Jam Live. I am your host, Christopher Albert, or as many of my viewers like to call me, who the hell is that? It's me. I would actually like to thank my viewers for at least watching. So thank you so very much, Mom. I love you. <laughs> now, my mother isn't necessarily a fan of the show. She just has no idea how to undo the auto-programming I set on her cable box. <laughs> now, she might not watch my show by choice, but if she ever wants me to visit her ever again, she knows what she needs to do. Right, Mom? <laughs> That's right. Look at our amazing studio audience. Yay! You guys look great. So beautiful to have you here. The last time I had an audience this fun, I remember I was at the New York Comedy Club where two drunk girls and their boyfriends beat me up. That is a true story. Uh, people can be so violent when they don't like your dog jokes, but I couldn't help it. That's what they look like. But I look pretty great today, right? Look at this jacket, look at this. Now, if I turn it around, I don't know if you could, if you could read that, right? We are the world. We are the children. We are the world that left. We are the ones that left the world for our children. That's what it is. I actually co-wrote this jacket with Quincy Jones. It's all. It's all we got up to, because as soon as I got to his recording studio, he called security on me. <laughs> but this jacket was actually repurposed and redesigned uh, by our guest today, Miss Sherry Tago. <laughs> yes. And she has no idea I stole it out of her dressing room. That's, that's what's going on here. <laughs> Look away, Sherry! So when you see her later, you can tell her that's what she gets for doing a show with a Puerto Rican, okay? <laughs> huh, thank you. I'm actually surprised at how many of you, you know, fail to follow protocol by not putting away your valuables when a Puerto Rican walks into the room, right? Look at that. <laughs> see bags and watches and jewelry. I really don't believe you should believe in all stereotypes you hear about Puerto Ricans. Though I do know of some Puerto Ricans who have stolen stereos of many types. <laughs> all of our fathers can't be perfect, can they? No. Now, other than how we typecast, um, how we are typecast, not many people know much about Puerto Ricans, except the fact that if you ever do meet a Puerto Rican named Maria, just like the hurricane, she is likely to lie to you about how many people she has killed, okay? So, <laughs> stay away from her. She belongs in jail. <laughs> now, Puerto Ricans are loud, eccentric, and proud people. So, you know, please accept my apologies if any of you live next to one, all right? <laughs> my, my grandparents used to tell me all the stories about when they actually first migrated here from Puerto Rico with their families and friends. And um, Puerto Ricans were just so happy to come to the mainland and live the American dream, which is why half of them immediately signed up for the armed services and the other half signed up for food stamps. Yes. I lost you guys with that one. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> Now, Puerto Ricans are very diverse by nature, right? Because we are part Spaniard, which when you think about it, explains our need to steal, right? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. We are part Taino Indian, um, and just like our native ancestors, most of us don't own any land anymore either. Uh, still renting. And uh, based on my father, who disappeared when I was just a baby, some of us Puerto Ricans are also magicians. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. <laughs> okay. Now, we are also part African. Um, now, you can't tell this by just looking at me, but I do have a big uh -oh. black <laughs> tattoo right here. It's right. It's of a black penis, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Now, like our African-American neighbors, Puerto Ricans come in all colors, right? Uh, we can be very dark, like Joe Jackson, right? We could be a nice mocha skin color, like Janet Jackson. 
Um, we can be high yellow, like Latoya Jackson. <laughs> or we could be red bone, like Michael Jackson. Or zebra skin, like Michael Jackson. <laughs> or melon the deficient. You get it. OK, that's good, though. You got it. No, I, I miss Michael Jackson. I feel bad for dead celebrities. They're nothing but Halloween costumes. But they look great. OK. Wow. Now, not many people know this, but back in the day, in the hood, people referred to me as Mahalia Jackson, um, not because I was the queen of gospel, but because I was a queen. Hey. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, young lady, but I still cry to Mariah Carey music in the shower. That's me. But believe it or not, I wasn't always the queer that you see in front of you. Um, I used to date women. Shocker. Um, <laughs> but did they date me? OK. I remember the last time I slept, slept with a woman. Um, she was really <sighs> pregnant. And um, yeah. She was a sister, too. Um, for everybody here knows, but for those of you at home who don't know what a sister is, that is a black woman who will kick your ass if you still act like you don't know what a sister is, OK? <laughs> but obviously, maybe you can help me out, some of you sisters who are here. Obviously, a black woman was not dating a Puerto Rican for stability, right? No, she wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, what she wanted was a mixed race baby with good hair, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> But that was never going to happen because we all know that the people with the really good hair are the Asians, right? And let's be honest, when was the last time you've seen a sister with an Asian man? Never, right? Never. That's because no one gives up sausage for a spring roll. It's just not going to happen. This is, this is not a question and answer segment, guys. But I got you. Imagine. Tiger Woods. OK. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like Tiger Woods. I love my Asian friends. I just could never tell, you know, whether they're smiling or crying. You know, I don't, I don't know that. <laughs> what I do know is if you ever see a young Asian woman carrying a broom, you should run, OK? Because she's not there to sweep, OK? She's there to sock it to you. Run. It's too soon for that one. OK, it's too soon. Now, before we receive complaints, thank you, Ray. <laughs> I just want to say I'm not a racist. I actually have lots of Asian friends, right? There's uh, Lucy Liu. There's Kimora Lee. And uh, there's, what's her name? Uh, pork fried rice. OK, that was racist. <laughs> now, for the record, I do believe that Asian women can drive. It's just really hard for them to see. You know, because of, you know, yeah, they also wear false eyelashes as well. That's them. <laughs> but back to the mixed race babies. <laughs> because they're so popular now, right? They're, they're really popular now, right? Because everyone seems to want one. They're just like the Air Jordans of all babies, right? <laughs> Holly Berry. Um, now that's because. Air Jordans of all babies? The Air Jordans of all babies. <laughs> <laughs> You obviously like that I'm one. Still with the spring roll and the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to guess which one you are. Okay. <laughs> Pause. I don't know either. <laughs> now, you know, because you listen. I mean, you could have a black and white baby, and as we have found out, that baby could grow up to become, you know, the president of the United States. Thank you, Obama, for that. Um, yeah, yeah, one. You could also have a black and Puerto Rican baby, and that baby could also grow up to become president as well of cell block D, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, me and, and my missus at the time, um, we didn't get to have one um, because she suffered a miscarriage, which, you know, at the end of it was fine because during our relationship, she slept with other men, so I had to dump her and go sleep with other men. But <laughs> and the sad part is for me is I never got a chance, you know, to hold my, you know, mixed race baby in my hand and be the father I always wanted to be, um, which was a black one. I always wanted to be a black dad. Yeah. Bill Cosby, 
but uh, look how well that dream turned out. Uh, which obviously shows I wouldn't even know a good father figure if one stood right in front of me, you know? But if he wanted to stand behind me, he could be my daddy anytime, right? That's, that. It's like what my grandmother used to always say, who needs a dad when you could sleep with someone else's? Right, Abigail? That's right. <laughs> Now, I don't need to do crazy things like that anymore because um, I've been happily married now for four years. And thank you. So when I say happily married, I mean he's totally younger. Um, yeah. Who's the daddy now? I am. OK. I just, I just don't understand this notion that you know, just because I'm married to another man, that one of us has to be the girl in the relationship. Because I feel like we're both men, right? Why can't we both be the girls, right? That's us. <laughs> now, my husband, who isn't here right now, is amazing. Um, and you know, what makes him amazing, you might ask, is simple. He's not here right now. <laughs> He will be watching, won't you, honey? Won't you be watching? <laughs> well, I hope he does, because we have, a, we have a great show, and we have a great guest today, because sitting down with me, coming up, is stylist and founder of House of Tego, and Tego's Closet is Miss Sherry Tego. <laughs> yes. So stick around, guys. This is Junker Jam Live. We will be right back.